Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. And today I'm gonna to share my experience on where I actually designed and built something myself has actually helped me when it's come to designing something in the office. Before this experience, the only kind of manual labor I ever did was back at school in um, like design tech classes or basically building IKEA flat pack furniture. So what did I actually build? I actually designed and built a, a really simple raised timber decking in the back of my garden and I built this around five years ago and unfortunately I only have some really crappy photos and I didn't take any videos at the time because obviously I didn't think I'd be doing YouTube but hopefully the photos will give you sort of an idea of what I was building. So what I did first before I actually start building it was like you would in the office is to look at your existing site and, and plan it from there. So I measured up my garden and then I ended up drawing it in AutoCAD like properly because what I wanted to do was quantify all the materials that I needed to avoid as much wastage as possible. So what did this uh, sort of quantifying exercise teach me? Well, it taught me a lot about cost and also a lot about sort of buildability. Understanding the stock lengths of timber really helped me plan and organize wood materials and to avoid wastage like I mentioned earlier. The cost side of it was probably the most important thing as I'm the client and builder essentially and as, and as we all know money is like the most important thing for a client and it was true for me. I wanted to keep my cost as low as possible. I mean I was quoted I think around nearly £4,000 for a builder to come and like build, buy all the materials and then build it. And I was like, nah, I'm pretty sure that I could do this myself. And I'm really glad I did because it taught me so much and all the tools that I had to invest to be able to build this project, I'm still pretty much using a lot of them still. As it was a timber decking, I was gonna be using a timber frame to support the decking. So that's just be framed out in, in just timbers and then with some other like joists that I don't think it was like 600 centers like you would on a, like a normal presidential timber floor. And from the back of my garden or back of my kitchen door, you'd have to step, I think it was either two or three steps down to the garden floor. So I wanted to build uh, my decking so that it was level with the door threshold. So I could just step out straight onto the decking without having to take any steps down. So in order to have a sort of raised timber floor, I obviously needed to create some columns from these um, timber, timber joists. And obviously these little stub columns would need to be supported on foundations. Um, so I had two, two options, either I would have to dig up the hole and then sort of concrete them in, or I could sort of do like a really cheap way of doing it and I was just to buy some paving slabs and these would essentially be my precast foundations. So I obviously went for the sort of cheaper and cheater way of doing it and bought essentially a load of paving slabs and um, yeah, use them as my foundations. But before actually building any of the foundations, I had to sort of profile the ground. Um, in my garden, I, on the sides, I had these sort of raised planters and in the middle of it, I had this like, con like really crap concrete paving. And the idea for me was to build a decking about halfway up the garden. And then the other half was, was gonna be um, artificial grass, which I did the following year, I think. And um, so I had to treat the raised, the raised planters on the sides. So I had to clean it all out and then put some weed membrane down. And to hold all the weed membrane down, I used the, the rubble stone, which I got from smashing up the concrete paving uh, up to the point where I didn't need it anymore. So now that the ground was ready, then I could start building the timber frame and then start building the decking. And it wasn't as simple as I thought because it wasn't just like straight. I hadn't drawn any of the, the gutterings and all the little bits which stick out and make it not straight. So yeah, I had to sort of improvise a little bit and frame around it, uh, which was fine, it wasn't that difficult. And um, it was all going pretty well up until I pretty much got to the end of the decking. So I think I pretty much framed it all the way out to where I needed it to be, which was halfway up the garden. And then I kind of realized that if I continue building it at the level, there's gonna be like, a five to 600 mil, that's not even a step, or five, five to 600 mil height difference. So if I wanted to gain access to the artificial grass portion of the garden, you'd have to step 600 mil, which is quite a drop. 
Um, so I had to fabricate some stairs, which I obviously didn't factor in my plans at all. And so I was praying that I actually had enough material to sort of make these amendments. And if you've been watching kind of my other videos, you, you'll know that I really like sketching and my why I think sketching is so useful. Um, so to make these steps, I actually drew a really, really crap sketch on the back of a uh, letter or envelope, I think. Yeah, even though the sketch was so crap, it gave me enough of an idea or a plan um, to show me how I could build this. Uh, so I've got some photos because I was really, I was really pleased with what I had done. So I took more photos of the steps than any of the rest of the the decking build. So you can kind of see what I'd done. I had to frame it out and cantilever a little bit in the corners because I didn't have uh, good enough ground at the end. Luckily I had enough materials and I basically ended the project with almost zero wastage which was pretty damn good but if I was to do this again I would definitely order a little bit more conting contingency. I mean I was like trying to scrape the pennies as much as possible. But yeah, in reality, I'd probably should allow for maybe like five to 10% of contingency just in case you know, some blunders occur, which obviously did. But luckily I had just enough to cover myself this time around. I mentioned earlier that I had uh, drawn this up in AutoCAD, but I only drew it in plan. Had I been smart enough and actually drawn a section through the garden, um, I probably would have avoided this because I would have seen straight away that there was going to be a significant level difference and I would have, I'm pretty sure I would have uh, designed some stairs in right from the start. So hindsight, do some sketches before you start building just to make sure you've covered your bases. There was actually a last little blunder and I'm not sure if you've noticed but I've got like a little storage space at the back of the, at the back of the house which you can see with these um, two green doors. And as you might have been able to guess by now, I had basically built the decking all the way around it, which meant that the doors couldn't open because they opened outwards. So I had to pretty painfully use a handsaw and saw horizontally, which really isn't that easy. Um, so, I mean, luckily I didn't actually use that storage that often, but it was still, a pretty big oversight um, but I thought it was quite funny and that concludes my little story um, hopefully you found it enjoyable to listen to um, and what I want you to kind of take away from it is if you can put yourself in the builders shoes you know being physically on site dealing with like the handling of materials handling of tools gives you an appreciation of what sort of the builders or contractors on a real construction site actually has to deal with so Anything that you can design which will help make their lives easier, even if they don't actually say thank you, is gonna be really appreciated because if you can think about it before they build it, you can help reduce some of the risks and possibly the health and safety hazards which come with like building sites. I think a prime example of where people don't necessarily think about the guys on site is we can really easily spec resin anchors going into like the side face of concrete and we'll easily spec something like three or 400 mil embedment depth into like a concrete foundation. But then if you actually think about how much space they need in front of the piece of like that bit of concrete, it's actually quite significant because to drill a three or 400 mil deep anchor into concrete, you need that size drill bit and to actually physically drill that hole it's not just like a little handheld drill it's proper big a big boy sds drill and those things are pretty heavy i've got one myself and i was really really surprised at how heavy it is. it's not something you can hold in one hand you need both hands so you need the drill bit you know the space for the drill bit space for the drill and you need some space around to maneuver so you actually need quite a lot of space in front of this bit of concrete and I don't think if you're in the de if you're in the design office, you're probably not really thinking about this. But as soon as you get to site and you're probably stood in front of this bit of concrete, you're probably going to think, "Wow, I wish I had loads of room to sort of maneuver around just to install like these bars into the side of concrete." What I'm trying to get to is when you're in the design office, try and put yourself on site and just think about try and like mentally look around if you can and just think about what kind of constraints the builder is gonna have, like 
always think about how you're going to build something. And like I said before, anything that you can do to sort of help the builder out is going to increase the likelihood that they're going to be able to build the thing which you've designed properly. If it's too hard for them to build, they might, they might not be able to build exactly how you've designed it, which might mean that your design is wrong. Hopefully not, but it might reduce your kind of safety factor or your sleep factor. So really anything that you can do to help them achieve your design is gonna be pretty damn good. Anyways, if you've made it this far, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you enjoy my content or you've enjoyed the story, please consider liking and subscribing and uh, hopefully catch you on the next video. Cheers.